Hi, this is Scott Stripling from the Bible Seminary, and welcome to a very special TBS podcast. I have with me today as a guest, a dear, close, personal friend, and his name is Timothy Mahoney. You guys probably know that name as a filmmaker. Tim was formerly the president of NRB and has made a number of uh, really uh, important and impactful films over the last several decades. So, Tim, welcome to the TBS podcast. Well, I actually was the president of ICVM, not NRB, but oh, okay. <laughs> uh, international With, one international acronym is as good as another. Right, right. Who's, okay. <laughs> who's spelling anyway? Uh, no, that, that, not that, us, that, obviously. That's a film on the alphabet, which is the Moses controversy. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I was I was the president of the International Christian Visual Media uh, for I think six years, and we just had our conference, and it was a it's an important role to be a media person in today's culture. So, well, thanks for having me on. Well, we're glad to have you. We're sort of doing a role reversal today. I mean, usually you're the one grilling me with questions. And so today you're going to get a taste of your own medicine. Uh, Yes, I'm not as comfortable with that, but I do like uh, asking questions. But uh, yes, now I know how it feels. Uh, Well, good. Tell me where you, of all the ideas that you must have going around in that creative brain of yours, uh, you came up with this one about the Israel dilemma. Tell us how this came to fruition. Well, uh, back in 2007, we were working on what I thought was a finished film. And I'll share with you that, uh, I, you know, I wanted to be done with the film that I started with the Exodus, Patterns of Evidence, the Exodus. And it had lots of different names. It wasn't until a little bit later it became what we know today as patterns of evidence because we started to understand the best technique. Uh, it's our wet sifting technique, as it were, oh. uh, you know, to to get down to, well, what what is the best way to investigate uh, the these uh, narratives of the Bible? And we started saying, well, what is the what are the key events that we could look for? Uh, and in 2007, we thought we had a finished film and we were with a, a person who had um, a public relations firm and uh, we were at his um, his office. And uh, during that time, he basically was no different than it is right now. Israel was being uh, missiled. <laughs> and mm-hmm. he said uh, his name was Paul Ridgway. And he, he went and got a letter by Joe Rosenberg, I think it was. And he said he read it and he said, if if these events, you know, as you're getting ready to release this film, if it happens anywhere, it needs to happen in Israel. Mm-hmm. And. At that moment, we had, you know, somewhat of a of a, an unusual experience where we all knew if you ever saw that I had a film called uh, The Journey Home, which I tell in more detail if anyone wants to see that. we I just knew that I was not finished with the Exodus film, but I had to go to Israel. And when I got to Israel, I had, I don't know why, but I think God gave me some boldness where I just felt like I said, I need to speak to the leaders of your nation. And um, the the person who was working with me, she said, okay, who do you want to talk to? And I said, Benjamin Netanyahu, Shimon Perez, ambassadors, the uh, top rabbis. I need to find out no, about- no, Nothing like asking for low-level government functionaries, right? Right. I don't know. I, it must have been the Lord that gave me that that confidence. Uh, there are times when I had a boldness and I know, I know I can continue to need to, to have that and to be strong and courageous in this. And, um, you know, we got those interviews. Uh, and in 2007, I went in and and had these really unusual interviews uh, where we're talking about the Bible, we're talking about events of Israel. And those have been, for the most part, in the video vault. And then for, until now, uh, until this last year, when I saw what happened with Israel, uh, with the attack, and when I saw how the colleges were responding to it, and I'm thinking, wow, people don't understand the Bible and uh, they don't really know much of the story. I'm pretty sure they don't. And and that's when I felt a sense of responsibility, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so the Israel dilemma came out of that, um, uh, came out of the fact that I had these critical interviews that most people don't have. And I also had a sense that m- there was a need to communicate a pattern of God acting in history. And that's how this came about. So, Tim, but you still had a lot of work to do. So you had this this footage already, but there was still a lot to pull together. And you had a tight 
time frame, I assume you felt, felt a sense of urgency that yep. this would have the greatest impact if you got it out right away. Right. I did have a sense of urgency. And so uh, Steve Law, who has worked with me for, I don't know, almost 20 years, he, uh, he's a, a researcher and writing partner. And I looked at him and uh, Logan Kieswetter and I just said, guys, uh, start assembling this. Let's look. We, we were working on, there, there's a lot of, um, you know, when you talk about uh, uh, senses of direction for me, there's certain things that I had already outlined. We've outlined um, about 50 different patterns of evidence films already. I did that back uh, at least a decade ago after finishing the first one. I said, what do we do now? And I felt like God said, cast the vision. So this what this one wasn't in that outline, mm. but in a way it was all around the outline. Uh, and uh, what I did is I took uh, the question of Israel, which is, you know, I, I got a text uh, from Randall Price actually talking about what, you know, what might happen to Israel today uh, from with uh, being missled. And uh, so I think that uh, knowing that, that we had this uh, uh, narrative that, that people don't know the Bible, uh, the biblical, mm -hmm. you know, story. And then I, you know, fact that you helped me, you and Peter Vanderveen uh, and others, Randall Price, I had, I, I was able to use, uh, uh, you know, techniques just like we're doing right now to get interviews quickly, because I knew that there was an urgency to get this out. Sure. And, um, and so that's what we did. We basically put it together very, very fast, uh, but it very, very well. I could see. Right. Well, I mean, I've seen the finished product and it's really good. I mean, I think people are going to like this. Anyone who's interested in the Bible or the world of the Bible, you have a comprehensiveness in this film where if somebody's trying to understand the flow of the overall Bible, you're using covenant as a means of expressing that. And yeah. so I, I think people are going to learn a lot and appreciate the, the quality of the film. You know, Peter Gentry is also in this film. Right. And he's written a book, I think, called Kingdom and Covenant. Right. Uh, or uh, uh, anyway, I might have got the title wrong, but he <laughs> he's in the movie as well. And so I've been surprised, uh, Scott, by the interviews that I've had, how there are portions of those interviews that have been taken years ago that seem to be ready and seem to be pertinent for today. And um, mm. and the question about, you know, as I'm looking at this, this turn into, I said, Steve, well, how, where are we at with this? Because we're making other films too. Um, and I believe God is calling me to actually have a studio and to create more content and content that has virtue content that has truth, content that bears light, because the content that's being produced right now doesn't have any of that. It's virtueless uh, mm. in, in many cases. Uh, I think I could say that it's, if anyone's, you know, stream, you know, looking through Netflix or these shows and uh, you're looking at saying, is there anything that I would care to, to watch or that would not grieve me? And I, I oftentimes struggle with that. So I have felt that God has called us to make films uh, and by faith. I mean, I'm thinking about it I'm like, well, how could this be? You know, how do I do this? And uh, so it's really an issue of faith to basically start to create these films. And yeah. uh, and we're and that's what we're doing. You know, we're we're educators, and at the top of Bloom's taxonomy of educational kind of a, a paradigm, if you will, is creativity. And so we we do all these lower level things, knowledge and comprehension and application and synthesis and you know analysis. But it's all leading to this point that, in a sense, we can become like God. Uh, represent God in that we are creative, just as he is, and and produce something. And so to watch you produce this has been just really great. Um, Randall and I, by the way, are going to be speaking at a conference this Saturday in Dallas. And so we'll make sure that we plug it. Uh, since we're both going to be there together, we'll, we'll, we'll plug it. And uh, I'd love to see this get synergy across the nation. I think it would help uh, a lot for people to understand uh, there are people that have a, uh, uh, not a deep understanding necessarily. And I think what's happened here with your help and with the other uh, scholars is that they've actually helped us to do something that I don't think has ever happened before. Hmm. We've taken and created a comprehensive telling 
uh, from Genesis all the way through to right. the destruction of the first temple of God's narrative, God's story. We're going to talk about creation. We talk about the fall. We talk about Noah's Ark and the Tower of Babel, and it brings you through. And I think within a very short period of time, if anybody watches this film, they will basically be able to have a clear understanding of God working in history. And I think that that was yeah. uh, uh, answer, or Genesis Apologetics helped us with their footage. They had a movie called The Ark in the Darkness, and they helped us with that. So I was able to lean on different things. And oftentimes I'm like, God, what am I going to do? How am I going mm. to make this film? And I pray, and the Lord shows me a way. I kind of, mm. I'm, I'm participating creatively with him. Yeah. And that's yeah. how this came about. So you, you have the footage from back in 2007 and that that time frame then you you're able to partner and get some some cgi type stuff and then yep. you do some of your own filming and then yep. you have scholar interviews and then like a chef you're, you're sort of bringing all the ingredients together and giving it a cohesion what i think people are going to like are the five parts okay you want to yep. Talk talk us through these five parts because that's what's going to stay in people's minds. Yeah, that that has been the technique, you know, and I think it's been inspired. Uh, I do feel that the the intellectual property that we have is the uh, concept of patterns, working with patterns, and so, so you've got a the, pattern for sure here. So what yeah. is it? Yeah, well, the pattern it has to do with God, you know, God having a covenant, and and so what we're being told and what I'm looking for is can I find evidence of God acting in history by looking at the nation of Israel? And there were prophecies that linked God uh, to a covenant with Abraham and with his descendants. So later on, Moses and the Israelites, they go right. to Mount Sinai, and the Ten Commandments are given there, and they marry God. They they basically make a deal. Sure. And and what ends up happening is that Moses writes down and documents that there are, are blessings if you obey the covenant, and there are curses if you disobey the covenant. And I think that this is a, I'm going to demonstrate with our team, and th not, not, I mean, I'm just kind of gathering it together, like you said, uh, a uh, the fact that we're going to look for a pattern that has five steps. The very first one is that God, uh, Moses uh, says that God is going to allow them to have a kingdom. So we're okay. using Moses as the one who has the uh, information coming out of the book of Deuteronomy. Well, it starts in Genesis, by the way, but then we move into, and it says there's a promise of a kingdom. Mm -hmm. We also know that there is a, uh, th that they'll, that in this promise of a kingdom, uh, what we see is Jerusalem and they have a temple. Uh, that's going to be, we're going to be establishing those, those elements to, to start sort to of a dwelling, down. a dwelling of God among them. Yeah. Yeah, correct. Uh, yeah, and as you know, uh, for a while there it was at Shiloh, and then it later moves. The Ark of the Covenant moves to this temple, and uh, Solomon builds this temple. So this is a, a part of the archaeology that we're going to be looking at Jerusalem and mm. and the temple. Now, what happens is that Moses is uh, says that listen, uh, the Lord is going to judge you, and in the future you are going to break the covenant. He says, when you do break that, the kingdom will be destroyed. So and, that's, that's step two. Yeah. And that's, yeah, exactly. Step two is the kingdom will, would be destroyed. And what we're going to do is look for evidences of the fall of Israel and uh, Judah. And we're, we did recreation. So we've got Sennacherib and Nebuchadnezzar. Yep. We have Hezekiah. And then we bring the prophets back. We have Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, and some of the officials uh, that are there because Scott, you can talk to this. The, the inscriptions and the evidences mm -hmm. are tremendous. We yeah. even have Israel Finkelstein, uh, who is talking about the evidence, right? Yeah, yeah it's, that, it's, that's a rare. To, yeah, well done. Yeah. Uh, and so then it says, uh, so we have kingdom, and it's going to be destroyed. And then it says, you're going to be scattered. So that's the third one. That you're going to be scattered. And um, so we show evidences uh, through the archaeology, through the inscriptions, the Assyrian and uh, Babylonian yeah. inscriptions and of people scattering. Who, people who like to see <clears throat> linkage between the archaeological data and the biblical text are going to love this because you, you've got all these, these inscriptions and then you're on side and you've got scholars talking about it, but then it quickly moves on. It's, it's not like you're lagging it 
at Megiddo or Lachish or something. So it's building toward a narrative because you tell people up front, here's the five steps, and then you start moving through them. So yeah. kingdom, this, destruction, scattered. Yeah, yeah. And then we move to persecuted. Okay. And we're going to show, you know, Deuteronomy says, you shall become a horror, a proverb, a byword among all these people where the Lord will lead you away. And, uh, you know, and so it's basically say, saying that God is going to basically show that you are going to be persecuted. There's great uh, penalty, great costs for breaking the covenant with the Lord. Mm. And one thing that's interesting about this is that um, I, when I read, I don't know if it was uh, the prophet Isaiah or Jeremiah, which one it was, it talked about um, about Israel being a bride. And, uh, and I so I recreate that scene of this marriage between mm. God and the nation of Israel. And I show mm. I show this young woman as a attractive woman who God gives earrings to and necklaces and clothes and takes uh, to and her as a bride. And, yeah. Yeah. And that hadn't really, I don't think, been dramatized ever before. So there's no. things that you'll never have seen before. No, it's really good. To tell the story. And then what, so after persecution, persecution or being persecuted comes the fifth uh, example, which is returned. And we're going to be looking at the return to the promised land. And, uh, and that is what the film is looking at. And when I was working with Steve, he said, Tim, this happens twice. Um, and I knew that it had happened twice, but he said, it, it's going to need to be two films. Mm -hmm. So the first film is complete. It really tells the whole story of the first time this happened. But then what we know is that there is a second time that will happen, and that's the film we're hoping to have done next year. Mm. And that particular uh, in, you know, investigation will be the destruction of the second temple and the dysphoria that has happened over 2,000 years. Yeah. And so I'm headed to, um, to Europe to film uh, at a Holocaust location uh, uh, in the next week uh, to film uh, scenes for that. And so we're going to be seeing then, you know, well, where are we at today? And, you know, 1948, you know, on one day, this, these people, a nation is brought back together, just as the prophet said. So that's what this film is looking at. Is God acting in history? And how could, uh, if God spoke through these prophets, how could, how could you deny the evidences, the evidences mm -hmm. that we're going to be showing? Because they're they're going to be going through thousands of years, several thousand years of God's activity. But your name shall be Abraham. I also antagonized a lot of people by recognizing the state of Israel as soon as it was formed. Where is your title to the land? He said he held up the Bible. He said, here's the title. You don't lose your right to your home because somebody kicked you out. The Torah came before the land. It's not by accident. Patterns of Evidence Foundation presents The covenants are what holds the storyline together. A film that asks if God made a covenant with the children of Israel. God's covenants are everlasting. There will be other things disappearing from the natural cosmos before I break my covenant. I will never break my covenant. The God of Israel cares about all human beings, and therefore in the caring for Israel, he's expressing his love and concern for all humanity. What evidence remains today? Well, David is part of the history of early Israel, which has been maligned for some time because there was not solid archaeological evidence. That's all changed in the last decade. Debate rages over the truth of biblical prophecy. So they collect all these traditions, stories, myths, theological stories, and so on. We are dealing with the uh, traditions. The scriptures predict events hundreds, sometimes thousands of years off into the future, and they do so with a reliability that is breathtaking. What will the pattern reveal? If they break the covenant, yes. there are consequences. That's right. Before you get out of the Pentateuch, the whole basic plot line is there. Patterns of Evidence, The Israel Dilemma.
one of the questions that you asked me in the film was about predictive prophecy. Um, do we do we have reason to believe that we have something called predictive prophecy? And so we discuss how Isaiah, for example, calls Cyrus by name 150 years before he's born, and then Cyrus is the one who facilitates the return to the land. Of course, someone like you mentioned, Israel Finkelstein, on the other hand, their only way to respond to that without saying it's a miracle is that the Bible was written after the event, and that's the only way that the prophets could have possibly known this. Right. One of the things that you've done well in your films is to, to show the supernatural aspect that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he has moved in history, and he is still moving in history. Well, what's been helpful is that I really enjoy when you talked about the, uh, this creative. I didn't know I was up on the top of the pyramid, but I, I love the creative part of it because, in a sense, uh, I see a bit of we, we we have another film coming out uh, coming up coming called the american miracle which is about god's providence hey, i've heard about that film yes but you're in it that's right <laughs> uh, uh uh you play an attorney uh and the during the revolutionary time uh and uh what is interesting about this is that the founding fathers knew about uh the presence of god and they talked about providence and this right. film is called the american miracle um, uh, our nation is no accident. Here we are on the day of election. Yeah. Our nation is no accident. And the two nations that I believe had a relationship, an unusual relationship with God, is the nation of Israel and the nation of America, because we have a covenantal government that uh, identified that there was a God who mm -hmm. gave us our rights. And uh, and so I'm 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 in an unusual place making these types of films, right? Uh, but uh, this one is reminding us, and you know the Bible talked about do not forget what God did by bringing you up out of Egypt, mm. uh, and uh, and it's I I haven't counted, but I think it's over a hundred times that that is being you know yeah. told. You know, uh, it's, it's like a parent to a child. You get told the same thing a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Um, for those in the TBS folks in the Houston area, the American Miracle, uh, much of that was filmed here in Houston, wasn't it? It was. Uh, an important scene was at Houston Baptist or yeah. Houston Christian College. Uh, Houston Christian College has a replica of Independence Hall. Yeah. And we were blessed and fortunate to be, the, I think, we well, we were the first to ever film anything there. Uh, and we filmed, a, you know, a right. huge part of the film which is the constitution. So the American miracle starts uh, really in 1826, uh, 50th anniversary. And then we go back to the beginning and we, our main character is George Washington and we follow his life as he puts his trust in God. And he has these miraculous uh, times when God spared him. And then we take you through the American revolution through uh, uh, everything from the crossing of the Delaware uh, to Valley Forge and into these battles of which um, uh, the reading of the independence, the declaration, and all these different things where God That's supernaturally important. interacted. So, sort of same idea that God is active in history, right? It is his story, right? His story. Yeah, exactly. Um, as far as star, star power goes in that film, uh, we have Nicole Mullins. That's pretty cool. Yes. Nicole C. Mullins is she's playing Mumbet Freeman and, uh, uh, you're on the other side of the table. We've got another person, uh, uh, Libby Smallbone, and she is yeah. playing uh, a woman who uh, who was a slave master uh, to Nicole, and um, and there's a trial, and that begins the abolition movement, really, and the beginning of of anti-slavery uh, movements, uh, and that happened during right in the middle of the Revolutionary War. It happened, um, and each of these films. Uh, that I'm working on. And these films are really about God acting in history. Mm -hmm. And can we see the pattern of God acting in history? And what has he done? And, you know, I think we have to believe that even today, God is acting in history. That's right. Uh, and we need uh, today's to... Today's election day. Yeah. And either we believe this or we don't, that God is sovereignly in control of the affairs of men. Right. Exactly. And well, people... Go ahead. I was going to say, uh, this film is coming out November 13th and 14th and okay. 17th. Uh, it's a Wednesday, Thursday, and a Sunday. And they can go to patternsofevidence.com 
patternsofevidence.com and get tickets. And we actually have group ticket sales. Uh, I think you might have to be a group that's, uh, you know, like 20, 25 people, but you can get a discount for that. Uh, And uh, patternsofevidence.com. And it's really important that people buy their tickets in advance because the theaters won't hold them. Uh, the, they won't uh, hold sure. the theater if they don't see some kind of ticket sales happening. Okay. So uh, all of our TBS so. folks, I want you to, when, when you finish watching this, go to patternsofevidence.com. We'll and, have and it on you'll the see the ticket link. Okay. And, and go ahead and get those tickets, invite other people. And, you know, the election will be behind you and you'll something fun, wholesome that you could do. Uh, go to the theaters and um, invite your neighbors uh, to go with you. And if you're at the uh, at the website, you you also see uh, a Bible study. We have a if you want to prepare right. yourself and or bring your small group, your Bible study group or Sunday school class, uh, you can download the Bible study. It's just two pages. It gives you all the scriptural references that could help you probably uh, prep you uh, to go to the film and just really know what these passages are. And then you're going to see right. this amazing, I think, inspiring pattern of evidence of God acting in history. Uh, and I, I just, I, you know, one thing I, we could talk about is Isaiah and Hezekiah. I didn't, I never really put the two of those together. I never really, I guess I didn't uh, read enough, but how all that came together. It wasn't that pretty fascinating. We, we have a group of TBS students in a couple of days who are traveling to Oklahoma to where the uh, Hezekiah and Isaiah Bula uh, our, our Hezekiah and Isaiah Bull are in display. And uh, so this has been on my mind a lot, just to think how the Bible juxtaposes them. Um, Isaiah ministers during the reigns of four different kings, but it's Hezekiah is the one that we always think of when we think of Isaiah. And the, the idea that their clay seal impressions, of what we call Bula, are found just south of the Temple Mount, about two meters apart at the same level through wet sifting. And, you know, the first one was readable and you're like, wow, Hezekiah. And then a couple of months later, you see that it's Isaiah is right there with it. And it's yeah. as if God, God saying thousands of years ago, I, I, I am the God of the past, the present and the future. And I'm doing things now that are going to continue to ripple into the future. Yes, and not only that, but there are two other uh, uh, seals, and what are, I can't remember the name of those those men that were officials. Um, uh, that, but um, when you when you have all four of them together, that were uh, right. officials Gim- of Hezekiah, Gim- Gimaliah uh, mentioned in Jeremiah, and the other one escapes me at the moment, but uh, it's all documented in the film. Yeah, yeah, and that's the reason why um, as we move along in history, more and more evidence really starts to surface. Uh, and and so what does it mean for us today? Uh, I think that uh, I am going to, as we move forward in time here, uh, uh, we're going to basically say, well, what are the different ways to view this? You know, does this mean, what does this mean? Does this, does this mean that Jesus is coming tomorrow? Or, or does this mean, what does this mean as Israel becomes a nation again? And so I'm going to try, because some people ask me, what's your position, your eschatological position? I said, I can't even say the word (laughs) eschatological. So I don't know if I have a position there, but I I think what it would be I've got a pattern. I may not have a position, but I've got a pattern. But I have a pattern. So what I'm going to do is is I'm going to say, well, what are the positions we would look at? Mm -hmm. And what is the evidences that are for those? And what are the ways that we should think about this? So if I think about it like one way, I think it is it called preterist. Yep. Um, yep, that's one way that, uh, uh, or is it, then there's a dispensationalist. Mm-hmm. So I think the next film will basically unfold what are the different ways that people look at these and, things. And, you know, that's such a valuable way to learn. And that's what we were teaching eschatology this semester at the Bible Seminary. And that's our approach. You know, we teach all the, all the various views and we let people grapple with that. And that's mm-hmm. what thinkers do. And that's what patterns films do is they, they, they give people good information. They, they bring it to life and then they let them grapple with it. And it's in the grappling that God is working, I think, in people's lives. Yeah. What's, what's um, true about this is that um, unbelievers 
or people who are prodigals, and there's just lots of them, uh, are distant from the scriptures. This film could be a wake up call for a lot of people because right. it'll the Holy Spirit will use it to resonate to them. And I think it's important. I, I on Amazon, you know, I look at what the first film done. I think I have over 3,000 uh, people took time to write. And, you know, that film has a five-star rating. But what they write and how it impacted them, mm. I have no clue as to the impact of, the, of what the films have. But there are people that are at disparate times, and they've forgotten that God is a God of yesterday, today, and, you know, in the future. You know, that just understanding what the word I am means. Yeah, I am yeah. that I am. Uh, right. It's hard, hard to figure that out. Uh, Cause we can get really focused on, on things of, of today, you know, and we don't realize that there's a bigger um, activity going on. And that's the reason mm -hmm. why I'm thankful. I never really uh, woke up, you know, and said, I'm going to make these kinds of films. I think it sort of happened. And uh, in the sense that I was called to do it, and I've just taken one step after another, sure. it's sometimes not sure what this was about. But my encouragement is that I think that, I think this Israel Dilemma film uh, is a very, I think it's very important. And I don't really even know exactly how much, how important it is, but mm -hmm. I think it's going to establish a baseline for the nation of Israel, for us to, to understand exactly. what's going on right now. And so, I think, yeah, you're gonna, yeah. It, it's nationwide in America, right? But, but there will be secondary means of distribution to other countries because we'd like to get it into Israel as well. Right. And I'd like to probably get it into Hebrew um, uh, so that it would be very easy to, right. uh, so I'm working on, you know, I'm 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 not there yet, but we're working on uh, modifying languaging. Some of our films we've got them in, we've got them in, um, um, you know, um, we have the the words, but we don't have. Uh, I forgot what we call it transcribed, but they're mm -hmm. transcribed so that they're in. Uh, you can pull up, I think, sixteen or seventeen different languages, but I would like to actually put it in audio. Uh, in uh, different languages as well. And that's something that we're working, we would like to see happen, but. Uh, Our TBS family is gonna help. So we're gonna, we're gonna buy tickets and okay. we're gonna invite other people and we're gonna pray for the success of the project. Um, as we kind of land the program today, we got about a minute. What, what final words do you, do you have for us? Um, uh, it's here election day in the US and we've got this great film that's about to come out. What's, what's your final word for us? I think that my life has been about um, asking the question, is God's word true? Mm. And I believe that as I've gone on this, and I've had times when I've been challenged, you know, uh, is God's word true? I think there's some of us out here that might be discouraged. We might be fearful. We might have uh, challenges that we're faced with. And that's why we need to go back and not look at the news, but look at God's word. And, you know, thinking about this, I am that I am. The promises that God has given us are eternal promises. And I think that's the word that I would say is that I have to practice that myself. There are times when I get discouraged and I'm wondering, okay, Lord, how are we going to get through this time? Right. And at this time when there's a lot of uncertainty, um, these uh, I've been called to make a film to encourage people to see that God's word is true and he's kept it and he'll keep it for us as he kept it for uh, the historical nation of Israel. So good. Tim, you're you're a great friend. I love you, brother. And uh, give my best to your your team, Steve and Logan and your darling wife, Jill, and uh, go play pickleball with her and go play with the grandkids when this is over. OK, well, thank you again for having me. It's been a been a real pleasure. Blessings. Blessings to you, too. Yeah. Thanks for joining us on the TBS podcast. To keep up with our latest insights and episodes, subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Your support helps us bring you more engaging content. See you next time for more exciting discussions.